just what is that 200 million person army that's talked about in the sixth trumpet of Revelation? This is part 58 of the Revelation study. Okay, we've been working through Revelation comparing scripture with scripture. That is spiritual with spiritual. Jesus' words are spirit and they are life. We look at precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit, and we recognize that God's word will not re uh, return unto him void. Every word in the Bible is important. It accomplishes God's desire. And we're working still in the seven trumpets of Revelation. The first four are the church age, the fifth and sixth are the great tribulation, and the seventh is the last day. Please consider subscribing to this channel, The Rock of Offense. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner. And let's move on with this study. Okay, so let's review the sixth trumpet. We looked last time at the loosing of the four angels at the river Euphrates, and that that points to the Great Tribulation, the, the establishment of the Babylonian army. Satan is the king of Babylon. Babylon is the false Christian church of the end time. And they go out to slay the one-third. God's people are persecuted. They're, they're, they're affected. They're, they're, they're put to silence. They're hated. Uh, so today we're going to look at the 200 million person army. We're going to look at that number. It has important spiritual meaning for us. And then beyond this video, we'll look at a little bit more on the description of the army as well. So let's move on in the study. Okay, and here's the verse. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, 000, and I heard the number of them. So what is, and if you, if you calculate 200,000, 000, that's 200 million. That's the army of this horseman at the Euphrates. And there's been many people in Christianity that teach wrong things about this, depending on, on how they believe in prophecy. Uh, most believe that this is a literal number. It'll actually be exactly not 200 million and one, not 200 million and five. It'll be exactly a 200 million man army. And often they, they say, well, this is going to be the Chinese army, but nobody else is that big to have such a big army. And it's coming from the east. But we're going to find out that we, as we know already in the book of Revelation, we compare scripture with scripture. We don't make wild guesses like that. There's a spiritual meaning to these numbers, and we're going to look at that right now. Okay, so let's look at this number 200 million a little bit closer to, to come to truth. Literally in the Greek, it's, it's the word duo, murius, murius. It li literally means two myriads of myriads. Uh, and myriads, sometimes it's translated as t the number 10,000 to distinguish it as a bigger number than 1,000. Uh, so if you do duo, murius, murius, two times 10,000 times 10,000, you come to... 200 million. So it's important before we, we go on, let's figure out, let's understand from the Bible, what is a myriad? What does it really represent? And what in the world does the number two symbolically represent? We know that numbers have symbolic meaning, especially when they're used in the book of Revelation, which is very, very highly symbolic. So let's move on and look at this a little bit closer. We see myriad, uh, it, it, it simply points to a great multitude. Luke 12, 1, in the meantime, when there was gathered together an innumerable multitude, and that word, that phrase, innumerable multitude, is the Greek word myriad of people. It wasn't exactly 10,000 people. So the translator said, well, it's an innumerable multitude. It's bigger than 1,000, but it, it's, it's meant to say it's a lar large amount of people, uh, in so much as they trod upon one another. So it was quite the crowd. 1 Corinthians 4.15 For though you have 10,000, and again that's the word murius, you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. And that's used symbolically. Nobody has 10, 000, exactly 10,000 instructors in Christ. It's used symbolically of being a large number. Uh, and again in Jude 14, Behold, the Lord comes at 10,000 of his saints. Murius. But he doesn't exactly have 10,000 saints that he's coming with. It's a symbolic number for a great multitude. And we also see myriads of myriads, which is used in Revelation 9. It's also the same phrase as used in Revelation 5, referring to the angels around the throne in the throne room of God. I heard the voice of many angels, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. Myriads, myriads, and thousands of thousands. It just simply represents 
a large, large amount of angels were around the throne. It's not meant to be exactly a hundred million and then thousands of thousands on top of that. Okay, but now we need to look at the number two, duo. There's a symbolic meaning of two in the Bible. Usually, it's a good, a positive meaning, the witness of God. Revelation 11, I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy 1260 days, clothes in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. And that's symbolic language. And in the context of Revelation 11, it was pointing to the symbolism of Moses as the law and Elijah as the prophets which we also see the transfiguration in Matthew 17. But we see two witnesses of Revelation 11. We see two as Christ sent out the 70 uh, disciples. He sent them out two by two, Luke chapter 10. Two by two into every, in, before his face into every city and place. And that's a symbolism of the, the union or the unity of two becoming one. We see the two advents of Christ, his first coming and his second coming. We see the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. They all have merged into one Bible, but there was two pieces. Israel and the church, the two become one. But there were two entities that became one in Christ. The two tablets of the Ten Commandments. Every word is established by two or three witnesses. So we see the number two. There's strong evidence in the Bible that this is the witness. of. And these passages are of God. But there are also... Two can represent false witnesses. And a very what we see in Revelation 13, the beast and the false prophet, which we'll look at in future videos, those are two false witnesses during the Great Tribulation. But we also see in 1 Kings 21 that Jezebel, that wicked queen Jezebel, sends out two false witnesses because she wants to steal the neighbor's yard, the vineyard. And all that has symbolic meaning, of course. And set two men, sons of Belial, to bear witness against him, against Naboth. And there came in these two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him. Two false witnesses. Even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones, and he died. And they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. They were two false witnesses. And Jezebel is a symbol of a false church, which we'll look at more when we get to our study on Babylon. But we see two can also be false witnesses. Okay, so let's just tie this together. So this army of two myriads of myriads, it's pointing to, the, the number two points to a false witness. And the myriads means a great multitude. And we know that this army is loose from the river Euphrates, which represents Babylon. And when we pull all these pieces together, especially in the context of Revelation, it's pointing to the false witness of the end time, false Christian church, Babylon. We see that in the sixth ball judgment, Revelation 16, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates again. And the water there was dried up that the ways of the kings of the east might be prepared. And that's pointing to the, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of false witness, the kingdom of lies. And he gathered them into a place in Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. It's, it's a gathering at during the great tribulation. There's a gathering of Satan's kingdom that's going to stand against God's kingdom. We also see we, we, in the fifth trumpet, which we've already looked at, that the locusts there pointed to Babylon. So we see this thread of Babylon through the book of Revelation. Revelation 9, 2, and 3. He opened the bottomless pit, referring to the great tribulation. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as a scorpion to the earth of power. It's the false witness. It's the false Christian church. It's the, the Satan's kingdom. Satan it comes as an angel of light. We, we see also, going back to the Old Testament prophets, which extensively talked about the Babylonian captivity, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and many of the minor prophets and some of Isaiah. But in Joel we read, And that which the locust has left, the canker worm has eaten, for a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of lion. That nation in context, in Joel, is the nation Babylon, which came to destroy Judah. Jerusalem, the land of Judah, and make it desolate. That, that's, what, that's what happens during the Great Tribulation. The Babylonian captivity is a type of the Great Tribulation. 
we see Babylon, the same theme, is tied into Revelation 17 and 18. The woman, Babylon, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with beautiful gold and beautiful precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand, but it's full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And that's what false churches do. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Babylon, Satan's kingdom, is the mother of harlots. Harlots refer to other churches. It's the false churches in the end time great tribulation. They're going to be all around us. And even today we see that happening. And the abominations, when we look at that in context, it's the worshiping of other gods and idols. That's what the Old Testament says abominations are. It's worshiping anything else besides God. And that's what Babylon's all about. It's all about worldliness in the church. Okay, so just a quick summary of this uh, study. We saw Euphrates, we know from the last part, part 57, points to the Babylonian army being loosed. The myriads of myriads is an innumerable great multitude. This is the end time during the Great Tribulation. There's this duo, Murius, Murius, these two myriads of myriads. Sometimes it's translated as 200 million uh, or uh, the, the 200,000 thousands. But it really, we should think about it as two being the false witness of the Babylonian church, the great innumerable multitude that come against the church in the Great Tribulation. It's the false witness of the end time false Christian church Babylon. We, we're going to have a lot to say about that in future videos. Uh, so, but for now, we're going to move to the next video, part 59, the sixth trumpet still. And we're going to look at the details of this army, this army of horsemen, and what they look like and what they do. And we're going to see more harmony with this idea of Babylon is attacking the true Christians. Please consider subscribing to this channel, The Rock of Offense. And thank you very much for watching this video.